Hello students. Today you all are going to learn about Ohm's law, which is one of the important law in physics. It was given by George Simon Ohm in 1827. It gives relationship between electric potential difference and electric current, which are two important terms used in electrical circuit. Students, to increase electric current in a circuit, we need to increase voltage, that is, potential difference. But how they are related to each other? To understand this, we have to refer to an activity, which is also given in your NCERT book. In this activity, there is a circuit. As you can see in the circuit, it consists of a nichrome wire, XY which is an alloy made up of nickel, chromium, manganese and iron. It also consists of an ammeter which measures electric current through the circuit, a voltmeter which measures potential difference across the nichrome wire, a key and four cells of 5 volt each. As you can see there are dotted lines which indicates that we can connect either one cell or combination of two cells, three cells or all the four cells together. So we will do four trials. In the first trial, we will connect only one cell. After connecting one cell, we will switch on the key. Then the current will flow through the circuit. The emitter will determine the current flowing through the circuit and voltmeter will determine the potential difference across the wire. As you can see, the current is 1 ampere and potential difference is 5 volt. Now, we will connect two cells. So, total potential difference will be 5 volt plus 5 volt which is 10 volt. Now, Again, we will switch on the key and the current will flow in the circuit. Now the ammeter shows that the current is 2 ampere and voltmeter shows that the potential difference is 10 volt. Now we will connect 3 cells. So the total potential difference of the cells together is 15 volt. Now again we will switch on the key. We will see the ammeter reading as 3 ampere and voltmeter reading as 15 watt. Now the last trial we will connect all the four cells together. So the total potential difference of all the four, four cells will be 20 watt. The emitter reading will be 4 ampere and the voltmeter reading will be 20 watt. After this, we will fill a table. In the first row, when we are connecting one cell, the current flowing through the circuit or wire is 1 ampere and the potential difference across the wire is 5 volt. When we are connecting two cells, the current flowing through the wire or the circuit is 2 ampere and the potential difference across the wire is 10 volt. When we are connecting three cells, the current is 3 ampere and the potential difference is 15 volt. And at last, when we are connecting four cells, the current flowing through the wire or the circuit is 4 ampere and the potential difference is 20 volt. As you can see, when we double the current or when we double the potential difference, the current also doubles. When we triple the potential difference, the current also triples. It means that the potential difference is directly proportional to current. Which means that when we are increasing potential difference, the current through the circuit is also increasing. This is Ohm's law. So I will state Ohm's law now. According to Ohm's law, 
the potential difference across two ends of a conductor or a wire is directly proportional to the current flowing through it provided the temperature remains constant. Once again, according to this law, the potential difference across two ends of a wire or a conductor is directly proportional to the current flowing through it provided temperature remains constant. So temperature should remain constant, then only the Ohm's law is applicable. Now we will draw a graph using this table. But first we will complete the table. As you can see, the last column, which is V by I, is not filled. It is the ratio of potential difference and current flowing through the circuit. As you can see now, the value of V by I for each trial is same. What does this mean? We will get to know after drawing the graph. So now as you can see, the potential difference is on y axis and current is on x axis. This graph is known as VI graph. V means potential difference and I means current. Now we will use scales according to the reading. As you can see on x axis, the, uh, the scale is 1 ampere, 2 ampere. So one unit represent 1 ampere. On y axis, you can see 5 volt, 10 volt, 15, 20 volt. So in this one unit represent 5 volt. Now the first trial reading represent the coordinate as shown here. The second, third, fourth. When we jo join all these points, we will get a straight line. Now this V by I is the slope of this graph. You have uh, studied about the slope of a graph in the ninth class. Yes or no? So the slope of a graph V by I is constant. What is this ratio of V and I represents? That is V by I, which is always a constant. What does this represent? This represents resistance of the wire. How? Now you will see. According to the law, potential difference across the ends of the wire is directly proportional to current flowing through the wire. Yes or no? Provided temperature remains constant. When we remove this proportionality sign and replace it by equal to, we have to add a constant. You know, in 9th class you have studied when we are adding a constant k in Newton's second law of motion. In the same way, here also we have to add a constant. But the constant will not be represented by k here. It will be represented by r. That is v is equal to i r. This r is resistance of the wire. That is v by i is equal to r. And this resistance of the wire is constant. From Ohm's law, we can define resistance of a wire as the ratio of potential difference across the ends of the wire to the current flowing through the wire, provided temperature remains constant. But what is the actual concept behind resistance? Resistance is made up of a word resist. Resist means to oppose. The actual concept of resistance means it opposes the flow of current through it. The wire opposes the flow of current through it. So we can define resistance as resistance is the property of a conductor which opposes the flow of current through it. Have you understood? So, there are two ways to define resistance. One from Ohm's law, which is the ratio of potential difference to the current flowing through the wire. And other is the opposition to the flow of current, the property through which the uh, conductor opposes the flow of current through it. Now, I will give you in-depth knowledge of 
resistance. For this, we will consider a wire made of a conductor. Every wire which is made of a conductor like silver, aluminium, etc. consists of atoms and valence electrons. For the flow of current, the valence electron should flow from one end to another. We know it already. So when the electrons flow from one end to another, the current flows through the wire. But when it flows from one end to another, it collides with the atoms, different atoms present in the conductor. Now, due to this collision, the, there is a hindrance in the motion of the electron. This hindrance is actually resistance. So the resistance actually decreases current flowing through the wire. So when resistance increases, current decreases. The best conductor is silver. It means its resistance is low, very low, least. Okay, so as the resistance increases, the current decreases. In which, uh, it means they are inversely proportional. SI unit of resistance is ohm. It is represented by this symbol. Now we will define one ohm as R is equal to V by I from Ohm's law. R is equal to V by I. One ohm will be equal to 1 volt upon 1 ampere. So now we will define resistance of a conductor is said to be 1 ohm when potential difference of 1 volt is applied across its end and a current of 1 ampere flows through it. I hope all of you have understood Ohm's law. Please revise it. Thank you and have a nice day.